So the, the fifth and the last talk of the uh, seminar is entitled Reading, Prayer and Service, Contemplative Prophetic Spirituality. So I was trying to connect uh, prayer meditation with reading on the one hand and with uh, service on the other. As we know that um, John Main first learned the uh, meditation from a Hindu guru uh, while he was serving in Malaysia. Uh, and he chose the um, Christian mantra, uh, Maranatha. But then he returned to England and um, became a Benedictine monk. He started reading the Desert Fathers and especially the writings of John Cashin. And he was much confirmed by the teaching of um, Cashin in this practice of meditation. As we know in conferences 9 and 10, um, Cashin was uh, recommending a uh, uh, kind of mantra, a short prayer to be repeated during the day, uh, which is taken from uh, the beginning of uh, the opening verse of Psalm 70. O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. And um, according to Cashin, this uh, verse would be an excellent synthesis of the whole book of Psalms. And um, in its turn, the book of Psalms is considered by the Church Fathers as a compendium, a synthesis of the whole Bible. So these two verses are very significant. Um, later, um, it didn't become a uh, uh, universally adopted um, um, brief invocation, but St. Benedict in his rule has taken this verse as the opening of each hour of um, the divine office. So it's also very significant um, in the monks in the West would uh, repeat this verse at least seven times a day. So here it shows that the, uh, there is a connection, close connection between um, the, um, the prayer, the short prayer and the Bible. It's taken from the Bible. And we can say that uh, it is also with the Jesus prayer. It, it is um, taken from the gospel, uh, the prayer of the blind man in Jericho, and the tax collector praying in the temple, uh, and also the um, uh, mantra, the short prayer, Maranatha, uh, is taken from uh, St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians as a, as a concluding uh, greeting. Uh, to the faithful. So there is a close connection and in order to, because during the time of meditation we are advised not to think of anything, um, so it's a kind of a spiritual poverty. We put aside uh, thoughts and words and many uh, images and so on, but it also needs to be nourished Apart from the time of meditation, one should continue to read and meditate on the Bible. Uh, otherwise, it's, no, it's not really uh, spiritual poverty, but just poverty uh, and uh, stop. So we need the uh, nourishment of a continuous uh, reading of the Bible. The two, uh, Bible reading and um, meditation, um, uh, silent prayer, should be considered as the two wings which enable uh, a bird to take flight. Then I would like to talk about this connection between meditation and service, um, reading, uh, prayer and service. And um, according to some commentators, we can find an excellent uh, passages from St. Luke, from the Gospel of Luke and the in the almost in the center of the by the uh, gospel, we have three passages. Um, the um, at the end of chapter ten, we have Jesus' visit to Martha and Mary. Then the beginning of chapter eleven, we have um, episode about Jesus uh, praying, 
and then disciples ask, ask him to teach them to pray. And then right in front of Jesus' visit to Martha and Mary, we have the parable of the Good Samaritan. So these two, three passages are consecutive, and they uh, uh, reveal or, or teach, teach the um, uh, synthesis, the unity between this um, listening, prayer, and service. So let us begin with the episode of Jesus' visit to Martha and Mary in uh, the end of chapter 10 of Luke. Um, here in the traditionally, this episode was interpreted as um, the comparison between two different styles of life. Martha would represent the active apostolic life of service, and Mary rep represents the uh, contemplative life. And the conclusion is that um, uh, Mary, the contemplative life, has super is superior to the active life. But um, actually, um, contemporary uh, commentators would think that's not really the text would like to say. Uh, the text is probably saying that uh, um, the two sisters represent two essential aspects of the Christian life, which should be integrated. It's not an option, alternative uh, between one of them. So the purpose of the narrative is rather to purify, to complete Martha's service with Mary's listening. Um, so Mary was adopting a basic attitude of a disciple who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying the primacy of listening to the word of God. And um, Martha was, uh, Jesus was not rebuking uh, Martha for his service, but of um, his uh, way of um, doing things. Martha was worried and distracted by many things. And uh, Jesus told her, there is need of only one thing. That is the primacy of listening to the word of God and all the, the rest should follow as a response to the word of God. So the idea of the passage is to uh, teach that Christians, disciples, should integrate this listening and service. The two sisters are living in the same house, so each Christian should combine the two sisters in um, themselves. Um, as Jesus would say, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it and put it into practice. The two aspects are necessary. Then we come to the um, following episode at the beginning of chapter 11, uh, 1 to 4. Um, Luke presents uh, Jesus uh, during the day, the busy day of preaching and healing. He found some uh, quiet moments and uh, he withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. And uh, the disciples was watching him and was much impressed. So when Jesus finished his prayer, disciples asked him to teach them to pray. And he taught them the Our Father. Now in the Gospels, we find uh, many references to the idea of Jesus uh, um, as praying, uh, to the prayer references to the prayer of Jesus. Um, he was um, um, praying either at the end of a long day of preaching and uh, healing and so on. Um, at night, in the evening at night, he, at night he would go to a lonely place uh, to pray. Or early morning he would go up to the mountain and to the lonely place to pray, to listen to uh, the Father, to have a uh, colloquy with the Father. So the Gospel presents Jesus as a man of prayer. Then we come to the third passage, which is just in front before the episode of Jesus' visit to the two sisters. That is the parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell in the hands of the robbers, and so on, and he was uh, uh, beaten, uh, half dead, and um, uh, left 
um, at the side of the um, of the road, and then a priest and a Levite saw him, and they passed by on the other side. Uh, they saw him, but it's a seeing without seeing, without any compassion. But then finally, a Samaritan uh, was passing by. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion. And uh, this is a different kind of seeing. He saw him and was moved with compassion. It is a seeing, as uh, uh, Benedict, Pope Benedict XVI, in his Deus Caritas Est in the encyclical, he would say the Samaritan's seeing is a seeing with the heart, not only with the bodily eyes, but a seeing with the, the heart. And he was moved with compassion. The Greek word esplankniste. It means a deepest emotion, sentiment, coming from the deepest um, inner center, from the bosom of a person, um, moved with compassion. Uh, and then immediately, this compassion uh, took action to help the, um, the, the poor man. Uh, um, and then Jesus was soon, um, the uh, tradition, the, church, the fathers of the church soon identified uh, Jesus himself as the Good Samaritan. Um, and uh, we say that the, the word compassion, uh, Jesus was moved to compassion. In uh, another talk, we mentioned their, their um, um, references in the uh, Synodic Gospel, saying that Jesus uh, was moved by compassion, began to teach the people to heal the illness, to cast out devil, to uh, multiply bread, and to raise uh, the dead, the uh, only son, only child, of a widow uh, in Naim. Uh, so compassion certainly is the secret of Jesus' public ministry. Now, um, tradition, the uh, um, Augustine and Gregory the Great, uh, commenting on the visit to Jesus' visit to Martha and Mary, I would compare first the two different styles of life active life, contemplative life, giving the superiority to contemplative life. But they also add that there is a still a higher um, ideal of Christian life, uh, which is, according to them, is a kind of um, life combining the two aspects, combining contemplation and service. They call it vita composita, composite or integrated style of life. And later Thomas Aquinas would have that uh, motto, uh, contemplata alis tradere, uh, to communicate to others what you have contemplated. And they, uh, Augustine, St. Gregory the Great, Thomas Aquinas, would think this is the highest ideal for the Christian life. And interestingly, they all indicate they point to Jesus as the supreme model of this Vida Composita, uh, who taught and uh, do different kinds of service to people during the day and pray till late at night or early in the morning. Then he prayed, um, contemplate, listened to the Father. So he is the example the supreme example of this Vita Composita. Now I would like to um, present the, a kind of uh, trend of contemporary Christian spirituality. And uh, I would like to use the expression contemplative prophet prophetic spirituality. Contemplative prophetic spirituality which can be seen as proposed by uh, Thomas Merton, by the, uh, the latter uh, part of his uh, writings of the, the later Thomas Merton. Um, contemplative, we understand, means giving importance to the Word of God and to prayer. Uh, by prophetic spirituality, um, um, I mean 
the spirituality according to the teachings of the prophets of the Old Testament. And the heart of their teaching is about um, love of neighbor and social justice. Uh, interesting to say that, yeah, of course the prophets um, invite people to maintain the fidelity to God, but this fidelity is not in abstract. Their um, worship in the temple and so on should be um, given evidence, become concrete uh, through this uh, love of neighbor and service and uh, social justice, so prophetic. Prophetic also means um, something, the prophetic means uh, um, that which expresses the, um, the longing, the desire of contemporary people, kind of vision, uh, reviewing the contemporary uh, tendency of our uh, Christians of our time. So uh, contemplative prophetic spirituality. And I would like to refer to uh, Cardinal uh, Carlo Martini, um, um, at the time, uh, soon after the Second Vatican Council, he noticed these two major trends of spirituality uh, in the Church, that is putting great emphasis on prayer and meditation and uh, reading of the Bible on the one hand, and commitment to social service on the other. And uh, they tend to be uh, separate. Uh, each one would, uh, would go its own way. Uh, Cardinal Martini was, say, was thinking to himself that that should not be the case. There should be some way to combine the two, the uh, uh, contemplative aspect and the, um, the social service. Uh, love of neighbor should be combined. Um, um, and integrating the two trends, um, I think, could be called contemplative prophetic spirituality. And Carlo Martini, at his time, that was uh, still bit, uh, he was still a priest uh, in, uh, as the rector of the Biblicum in uh, Rome, uh, the field of four or five years, from 1974 to 79, um, before he was made Archbishop of Milan, he found the community of San Egidio, and he joined that community, and he found this combination of the two in that community. And I would say, would like to say that um, the world community of for Christian meditation also uh, trying to combine these two aspects. Uh, on the one hand, it's clear um, they are very dedicated to um, to meditation, uh, to the uh, silent uh, prayer, repetition of Maranatha, but they also emphasize the uh, reading, personal reading of the. Um, of the scripture, um, and then they are also open to uh, uh, social uh, service, the, uh, the program of meditatio. Uh, they have, um, in the recent years, um, developed this uh, program of the meditatio, which would include six areas of outreach, education, starting from children and up to the level of university, then second, health, including uh, mental, psychological health. And third, um, outreach uh, in the workplace, business and finance. Uh, and then uh, science and technology uh, and environment and so on. And uh, the fifth is interface dialogue. And the sixth is about peace and justice uh, in society, in the world. So this is a very meaningful um, outreach. And the logo, as uh, you can see, a chalice with two doves. One dove is drinking. The other, the second dove is raising his, uh, his head, um, looking uh, outward. So one represents this uh, contemplative aspect. The other represents this um, outreach service aspect. Uh, so I think uh, uh, this is a um, very good combination of these two aspects, essential aspects of Christian life, this contemplation and action and service, uh, which can be called contemplative prophetic spirituality. 
And I would like to conclude uh, by referring to the, the, the names of the, uh, the last pope and the present one. It's providential. Uh, we have the um, uh, pope, the retired um, uh, emeritus, the pope emeritus, Benedict, and then our present, uh, our, our holy father, Francis. These two names providentially represent these two aspects of Benedict's uh, contemplation, prayer, reading of the Bible. And Francis, he took the name um, and he explained to us that it was uh, in view of St. Francis, uh, a uh, uh, great lover, a friend of the poor. So these two names really uh, combine these two aspects, major aspects of a Christian, our Christian life and we would represent this um, um, contemplative, prophetic spirituality uh, of our time. Thank you.